welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a tutorial for this little magic mushroom. First you need to collect your supplies. You need a crimson yarn, white yarn, and sand colored yarn. I use Granat Blanket yarn. You need 8mm safety eyes, a 6.5mm crochet hook. I use the Susan Bates one. You also need a row counter, which is optional, scissors, and a yarn needle, and also optional are stitch markers. I didn't use any, but if you're not good at counting, definitely use stitch markers. You need a little bit of polyfill stuffing, and black embroidery floss or yarn will work, or you can just choose not to add a face. So for round one, you need to do six single crochets into a magic ring. And while I let you guys do that, uh, let me just first apologize for sounding horrible in this video. I am a little bit sick right now, but I did not want to delay this video going up. So, yep. <laughs> uh, and I also want to say welcome or welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Jackie Chaplin. I am the owner creator behind Cotton Baby Crochet. I sell in person at craft shows and on Etsy. And now I guess I'm a crochet YouTuber, but we're still trying to feel that out a little bit. Um, but if you weren't uh, around for my last video, I did make an announcement. Once this channel hits 500 subscribers, we are going to be doing a giveaway, so if you're not subscribed, please do that. And if you are subscribed, just know that the giveaway is for either yarn or something I crocheted or both. I uh, haven't decided yet. Uh, and now we're getting into round two, which is uh, an increase into each stitch all the way around. You should end up with 12 stitches. And I am going to pop some music on now and just let you guys crochet. For round three, you'll be doing a single crochet and then an increase six times. So single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase until you've done that uh, all the way around until you end up with 18 stitches.
Now this is the point where I made sure the correct side of my work was facing out and then I started round four which is a set of single crochet increase single crochet all the way around or some people know it as two single crochet increase but I like to break up these single crochets because it allows your work to come out more round than like hexagon shape. After finishing that round, let's take a second to count our stitches before we move on to a decrease round. You should have 24 stitches right now. Now for round five, you'll do single crochet, decrease single crochet six times, leaving you with 18 stitches. Uh, I just did a regular decrease, but you can do an invisible decrease, but because blanket yarn is so bulky, uh, I don't feel there's a need to do an invisible decrease because you don't notice the decrease anyway.
Now when you get to the last stitch of this round, we'll be doing a color change, so don't complete it. Get to the part where you have two loops on your hook and you'll be about to yarn over, but instead of yarning over with the same red, you'll be yarning over and pulling through with a new color, which is your stem color. In my case, I used Baby Sand Brunette Blanket Yarn. Now once you pull the baby sand through, that completes the previous round 5, and you'll be moving on to round 6, which is done in the back loop only. You'll be doing a single crochet decrease times 6 all the way around, leaving you with 12 stitches. Make sure you do back loop only on this round because you'll be leaving the uh, front loops unworked and using them later. Now would be a good time to take a second to shove all your yarn tails into the top of your mushroom before moving on to round 7 and 8. Round 7 and 8 are simply a single crochet all the way around, so you'll have 12 stitches in round 7 and then 12 stitches in round 8. And to clarify, this round is worked under both loops, so you don't have to do back loop only for this one or the next one.
After round seven and eight, we're going to add the safety eyes. You're adding the safety eyes between rounds six and seven. You just crocheted seven and eight, but the eyes go between six and seven. And I did not count how far apart I placed my eyes. I had to guess their five stitches, but to be conservative, I said place the eyes four to five stitches apart. But of course, this is totally customizable. So if you like a narrow eye, do that. I prefer a wide set eye. I think it gives it like a cuter look. Whereas the closer the eyes are together, the look is more like comedic, kind of. Um, it looks fun. Uh, but yeah, so add your eyes wherever you want. I think mine are five apart. As I'm adding my eyes, I like to burn the baths on. I think it secures them a little better so that they don't pull out. But even though I use this as a way to reinforce them, I still would not give this toy to a child under the age of two. After you place the safety eyes, go ahead and start stuffing them. I added the stuffing until it was like flush across the bottom. Um, after the next round, we'll be stuffing a little more so you don't have to go crazy right now. For round nine, you'll be working in the back loop only. This will leave a little bit of a ridge so your toy sits flat on the bottom. You'll be doing a decrease six times all the way around, leaving you with six stitches.
after you finish round nine, go ahead and cut your yarn and fasten off. And then from there, you can check to see if you need to add any more stuffing. I topped it off a little bit. And then I sewed the whole clothes. To sew the whole clothes, you use the front loops of round nine. Uh, and you just go under each front loop and then cinch it closed. After you've cinched it closed, go ahead and weave in your ends to hide the yarn tail and make sure everything is secure. My technique, which I've never seen anybody else do, but I like to do it because I think it's the most secure, is I will go through the bottom and bring the yarn through the top middle where the magic ring is and then weave under all the way around on the magic ring and then go back down through the middle. Um, I think it secures everything top to bottom and helps pull down the middle a little bit to give the top of the mushroom like a nice dome shape. Now while the way I fasten off is unique, I do want to clarify that even though you could see the sand colored yarn coming through the middle of the magic ring on this particular make. Uh, normally I go out of my way to like hide the yarn I've pulled through the magic ring better but because I'm adding the white spots later I did not do that in this video so if you want to try that technique when you do weave under the magic ring it does typically hide the yarn. Now we'll be going back to red yarn and be using the front loops that we didn't use when we did round six. So first you'll do a standing single crochet to attach the yarn, then you'll do a single crochet all the way around, uh, coming back to your starting point, and then you'll slip stitch back into where you fastened on and did that standing stitch. Um, I hope that makes sense. But this is basically the like ridge at the base of the mushroom cap. So however you want to like make it look, you could do like a floopier ridge and use like a half double crochet so it sticks out further. Uh, you could slip stitch to make it more narrow. Either way, whatever works for you, I just basically single crochet around. <laughs>
After you made the ridge on your mushroom, you're gonna fasten off, cut the yarn, and weave in your ends. For a little extra security, I tied my two strands, but you don't need to do this. You could simply just weave them in. Uh, all up to you. Now using black embroidery floss or what I'm using is a DK weight black yarn. Uh, that's a three weight if you don't know the names. Uh, embroider the face. I just did a smiley face. Or you can leave it just eyes like the Mario mushroom is. Whatever works for you. Now after you embroider the face, you can go ahead and clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up. For me, it was tucking in the last little bits of embroidery floss on the face. And then at this point, you can be done. Uh, the mushrooms I bring to my craft fair are not this pattern, but they are a Katie Bean creative pattern. And they do not have spots, so and they sell just fine. So you could leave it as is, or you can add the white spots like I did. So the next part of this video is going to be me adding the white spots, but as you can see, they're added just randomly. I tried to make sure they weren't too close together and made sure they were fairly evenly dispersed all the way around the mushroom cap.
And once you're satisfied with the amount of spots you have and their placement, that is it. You guys are done. Isn't it cute? I hope you guys enjoyed this free tutorial and if you did, go ahead and subscribe because I have more free tutorials to come. And if you're looking for more quick market makes, go ahead and check out this video right here. Thank you guys. Bye!